Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you my top five examples of Power BI that I think every business should be implementing. So first off, I want to talk about tracking marketing leads. Now, this applies to every type of organization. Um, in some way, shape or form, you're going to be doing some kind of marketing, and then you're going to have inbound leads um, that you're wanting to track to see how your marketing is performing. Now, although this is a real report, this is just some dummy data. Valt have actually implemented internally a full suite of Power BI reporting, which helps us track everything from an initial lead all the way through to a sale. And then I'm going to show you some of the other things that we track in terms of our projects later on. But this is just a high level just to show you what you could potentially achieve. Now, this is actually all pulling from a CRM system, uh, which pulls through all of our kind of leads, which get converted um, usually typically from our website, but there's other ways that leads can come in. Now, essentially what we're doing is breaking this down into a few areas. We can see the total amount of leads that we've seen come in, how many got verified, as in they got checked by the marketing team to ensure they were a real uh, lead, and then how many were actually qualified by the sales team and started going down the track of being converted into a sale eventually. We also track how many household names we get, so these are big brand names um, in that month, as well as how many total sales have been made in that month and the average order value of a sale in that month. Um, other things we track as well are the cost, so the cost per lead, the cost per PPC lead and the cost per SEO lead once they're actually sold. As well as that, we also track the quality, um, which is at the validation stage when it first comes in. We give it a score based on the rating um, of particular factors and same goes for qualification and a combined score again this is all just dummy data this is not real data it's just giving an idea of the types of things that we are tracking in our real system uh, we can also see leads by interest um, so obviously this is a bit skewed because it's dummy data but you can see we can track all the different leads by essentially what they're interested in so the types of topics that they're interested in talking to uh, Valto about. We also track the disqualified le uh, leads by reason. So within this, we can see um, what we actually are cutting out. So most of them are non-sales. Um, we also have things which are junk as well. Um, and then there's certain types of leads which get closed because maybe they were too small. Um, maybe it was just the wrong solution. We weren't the right fit for them. Um, so we track all the reasons why um, potentially we're closing leads because again, that will give us valuable insights into our marketing efforts to make sure that we're changing our messaging and our adverts to basically make sure that we're setting the right expectations to our customers of what it is that Valto actually does. Um, we also track the validation leads by company size. Again, this is just dummy data, so this is this isn't really accurate. But we actually have multiple different pots um, based on grouping. So we go from a kind of zero to ten size uh, to a uh, eleven to fifty to fifty to hundred. 100 to 250, 250, 500, and so on. And then we split that out so we can see by company size. So again, we can kind of get a good idea about the types of customers that we're attracting, uh, the company sizes and things like that. And in fact, actually, if this is just a version one of this report in the future, uh, we've also then gone on to roll out additional features as well, um, which track our leads by industry uh, and other defining factors about our potential customers. We can filter this data as well. So if we wanted to know specifically where our leads were coming from, these are all the different places that we get leads from. So things like um, customer referrals or digital marketplace or um, SEO from our website. Or we could say PPC, which is our paid for advertisements. And we can then see exactly how many leads we've had from um, those particular uh, paid adverts in that particular month. Uh, and we can see what, what actual we were attracted so training power apps in tune whatever the types of interests were um we can clear the filters nice and easily using these buttons across the top uh, we can also look at the lead interest so if we we're interested in seeing how many leads we got specifically for something say for example like power apps we could see how many leads we got for power apps that month um, MQL versus SQL is essentially just how we categorize the types of leads as they come through. And that mostly is based on where they're originally generated, whether they were marketing, whether they're sales uh, generated leads. 
Um, and then also we can talk about business units. So we have different business units here at Valto. Um, so we can split that out to be whether it's underneath our uh, business applications business unit or whether it's under our modern workplace uh, business unit. So that just gives you a real sort of whistle stop tour of how we're using Power BI for uh, tracking our marketing performance, sales reporting. Now, this is the next logical step that if you're tracking your marketing efforts to understand what leads are coming through, you should also understand what sales are being processed and actually coming out on the other end of the conveyor belt. Now, unfortunately, I didn't actually have a draft version of our real sales um, reporting with dummy data in it. So instead, we've mocked up just a fake quick example of what a sales report could potentially look like. But it gives you essentially the fundamentals of what you need to know, which is essentially you want to be able to look at sales that have been made, their worth, and potentially um, what accounts or what customers they're coming from. So you can see some fake customer names here. Um, and we can also see the salesperson uh, sales. So these are some <laughs> made up funny names, Willy Wonga um, or Bruce Wayne. We can see here uh, what sales those individual salespeople have made in that month and their total value. As well as that, we can also see the sales by month. Now, this is really useful because we can then track this to see how sales have been going up and down over a period of time. And you can see here, uh, for example, um, I think it's the Willy Wonka color. He's obviously had a really good kind of month in April and in May, and it's dipped off again in June. So it makes it much easier for sales managers to track the sales over a period of time. Obviously, this is very basic and simplistic, and we can make this a lot more advanced for tracking each and individual part of a sales cycle. Um, the cool thing I love about Power BI, though, is that we can actually select, for example, I could select a particular uh, salesperson and by selecting them you'll then see all the other reports will then adjust so you can then see where the sales have actually gone so say for example if i was to select on bruce wayne you could see he actually had a really good month in january and then it's dipped down and it's not really recovered since january so i can very quickly see at a, at a glance all of these reports uh, all of these different areas of, of my report have updated based on me just selecting one of those salespeople, almost like as a filter for all the other elements of the report. Again, that's just a basic example, but hopefully you get the gist of things. And I think this is a vital thing, again, that every business should be implementing with Power BI. Policies acknowledgement. Now, this is a little less known kind of use case for Power BI, I should say. Um, but we've implemented it internally here at Valto and found it really successful. Essentially, what we're doing is we're using a pre-built um, system that Valto builds called Control Documents, which is a SharePoint policy management system to capture our policies and then issue them out automatically using Power Automate to our employees and then capturing actually who has responded to say that they've accepted that policy so they understand it. Now, this gives us two things. One is that we get a good understanding of who's actually accepted those policies. And in fact, we do track um, the individual employee names of who's accepted individual policies. So say, for example, there's ever a data breach or there's something that wasn't quite right, we could pull up the policy that says our stance on data and then uh, have a meeting with our employees and say, look, you signed and accepted this policy at this date and time. Um, it also is a great way of kind of tracking to make sure that policies stay up to date. So we can build a dashboard. Again, this is just a dummy dashboard just to show you um, the types of things which are possible. We can see the total amount of policies. We can see a summary of all the policies that are in and out of date. So any uh, that are out of date, potentially we could flag uh, as red. And then by clicking through to that, we could drill down to see actually which policies are currently being flagged uh, as out of date. Further down, I can see all the kind of policies which are currently under review. Um, and as I scroll further down, I can see um, ones which are kind of upcoming for review. So I can get ahead of the schedule and make sure that I've got time planned in for updating any more policies which are coming through. But you can see this is just a really quick kind of example to show you how we can track what policies we have, make sure that the ones uh, we do have are staying up to date on a frequent basis. We could also then report on the acceptance rate. 
So you could see here how many employees um, are viewable. Again, this is all just dummy data. Um, and we can see the overall acceptance. So overall acceptance rate is, is 81% of all the policies that we have in this test data. Um, obviously, that's something then you can keep track of and try and hopefully increase that. So it might give you insight into thinking about what internal communications or campaigns that you can run to make sure that people are not only kind of reviewing but accepting the policies and properly adopting uh, them into their day-to-day -day work life. Um, we can see based on specific uh, policies what the acceptance rate is for each one. So again we can drive that into the relevant areas because quite often these policy systems are different policies for different departments, different teams, different areas um, again which we can drill through to. There might be filters on the policies dependent on categories or different types of policies that they relate to. Um, we could maybe filter down see different kind of areas so um, this date, test data actually uh, was something that we're working with a fire and rescue service um, so this is something that we've got some test data loaded in from from them but again we can see acceptance by user um, so actually who's accepted it and ticked off in the app that they've accepted that particular policy and again we could then filter this down by department or job role or whatever it is um, that we're tagging those individuals with. I just wanted to pause here for a second to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video or any other videos that Valto have produced, please do subscribe to our channel. It really does help us grow. We release multiple videos every single week about all sorts of different Microsoft related content from Entra to Fabric, Power BI, Copilot, Power Apps, and so much more. So go and check us out and subscribe to our channel now. The next Power BI report that I think every organization should have is timesheets. So most organizations will track their workforce with timesheets on a daily or weekly basis. Usually it's against particular projects or work streams that they're currently working on so that they can see how the time is being split. Now this, ne not, this isn't necessarily something which is... Um, all about kind of micromanaging and understanding exactly where every last minute's going but essentially it's a good way of making sure that the team is well balanced so you don't want people to necessarily overly worked so say for example i can see here um, that alex has submitted 15 hours now this is just a test um, just to show you this as, as a piece of test data however if this was real data we could look at this and go well actually has he worked 15 hours or maybe it has been a mistake so we've logged too many hours against the project that we need to take back off um, so a making sure we're not overcharging our customers but also um, we're making sure that um, we've got the right amount of hours left in the project so um, that we're not deducting things and thinking we're further ahead in a project than we actually are. Now this time is actually being submitted um, into Dynamics 365 and we're pulling that data directly from Dynamics 365 into Power BI to be able to report on it. We can also see, um, for example, if there was more real, say, say for example, like Kelvin or, or Dan, um, they have submitted more hours and that's a more realistic sort of time that they've submitted. But say, for example, if this was something we spotted on a uh, frequent basis, the management team might pick up on this and think, actually, well, this individual maybe is overworking um, and we've got to be careful that they don't end up burning out because they're, they're actually working more hours um, than they should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Or we could look at um, somebody that's maybe submitted not enough hours and we could look at that from a perspective of, actually, um, I know he actually only worked half a day um, as an example or it might be he's not submitted enough hours for whatever reason maybe he's not fully completed his timesheet so this all helps us understand much more in detail about what our workforce is doing we've also categorized that time with certain types of, of uh, work that we're doing so we can understand where that time's going is it predominantly on um, project work is it um, support is it testing is it traveling to clients what is that time um, that's being used here so we can understand how um, where things are going and again we can we can analyze that further so if there's a lot of time going into one specific type of work we might look at that and go is that right should we be doing that much um, of that type of work um, are we not doing enough of a certain type of work so if there's not um, a certain type so if, say for example um maybe like personal development for example is a key one that quite often falls by the wayside is making sure actually how much time has been submitted for personal development and are we making sure that our employees are getting enough personal development time 
um, to support them in their career growth. So this is just a, as a um, a bit of an example of how this can be used, but it's something that I think is really important for every organization to implement. Skills matrix. Now, this again, I think is something that is totally missed by most organizations, but it's something here at Valta we've seen massive benefit from is actually tracking that the skills that we have in-house match up with the types of projects that we're selling um, and the types of projects that we want to sell in the future to make sure that we're staying ahead of the curve of the skills and technology knowledge that's required. So what we've done is we've built out a skills matrix and then we've got each of our employees to self-assess themselves against those skills and then we have their line managers cross-check that to make sure that they uh, also agreed with that assessment and then we have a really useful matrix to work on in the future now this again is just purely test dummy data however we have pulled in um, the real employee name so I'm going to blur those from the top um, of this because as I say this isn't reflective of their actual real skills um, but this gives you a good idea of what is actually um, a skills matrix so you would list out all the skills or the characteristics that you would like to see from your employees on the left hand side um, you would send out a form so we did this um, we built a form that people could self-assess their skills against and then it's submitted back into this matrix so then we could quickly see based on the employees that uh, are above um, across the top um, sort of of this table we can actually track and see for example um, what skills they have um, from a kind of rating of poor to excellent and we can then use this as a way of um, tracking their personal development over time so um, obviously there's loads of different skills and actually uh, we have this uh, split out um, we have skills basically for every single department so not one person is going to be uh, skilled in every single area of the business it's just not feasible at all so there will be patterns to this where there'll be certain skills which align to certain job roles to certain departments and things like that which you'll see people uh, sort of thriving in and in some areas not so much but again at a glance it means that managers can look at this and say okay well this person needs to improve their areas in this or this person is very skilled in this particular area and that would align them to a career uh, progression into a specific type of job role um, we can actually filter this by display name so if we wanted to look at this um, a specific employee to see what their skills are or if you want to look at it based on department we could um, split that or a particular skill so say for example if I was looking for somebody who was uh, skilled in Power BI I could filter this down to Power BI and then very quickly I could see um, say for example here that Alex is very um, good with Power BI um, or over here I can see that Ricky is excellent with Power BI and there's a, a few people which are fair um, with their, their knowledge of Power BI as well so I could quickly find someone with, with a specific skill set very quickly using this skill matrix if you need any professional services our Power BI experts are on hand we can provide you a free one hour consultation to talk to you about your Power BI requirements. There's a link in the description below to contact us and book your free consultation. Valto are Microsoft solution partners and we have uh, advanced specialization in both adoption and change management as well as intelligent automation. So we can really get to the bottom of what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to uh, automate as well as then report on afterwards using tools such as Power BI. So get in touch with us today to discuss your requirements. And of course, subscribe to our channel for more Microsoft related content. Thank you.